And now joining us in studio, our very good friend, one of the best marketers in real estate, top producer, George Lormer. Good to have you here, George. Thanks. Good to be here. I, I, you know, I mentioned this earlier in the show that when I call you a great marketer, I just think that's so important when you're talking about real estate and taking a property to market. Absolutely. It's an important skill set. And yep. I've always really uh, appreciated that about you and your website and your videos and all the resources you have. You just you put out great stuff to the market, and it's why you're doing so well. So anyway, Thanks. one of the many reasons. Yeah, well, thank you. And you know, here's one thing that we do that it's a little bit different than some of the other agencies. We market all the time, and we market to home buyers. So right. over 20 years, we have this buyers in waiting, which is thousands of buyers that are getting daily updates. About 500 of them are ready to go now. Exactly. Qualified, approved, motivated. So the marketing actually benefits. So you're hiring me to market your home, but in addition to that, you're hiring me to bring my pool of buyers, which may match your home right away. And another thing is, is I think marketing's change. You're not just putting a sign in the front yard and having an open house, which those things have a time and a place, but right. we're in a global economy. We right. have a lot of foreign buyers, and now people are buying real estate, I mean, from from their phone. It's I mean, amazing. The resources are insane. And I actually wanted you to talk about that today when we talk about the resources of right. real estate from buying, selling, and some of the things that I know that you help your clients with. Yeah. Talk about some of the resources that exist right now for on the buy side. Yeah, so in general, you know, what buyers are doing, they say, you know, close to nine out of ten, ninety percent of home buyers start their search on the internet. And so, you know, that's ninety percent. Ninety percent. I guess it is is that a fascinating number, kind of, only because it didn't used to be that way? But right. in reality, it seems to make a lot of sense. It does. Now. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and a lot of the sites that people really love, like Zillow type of site, which isn't really a real estate company, but they sell the information. So they do a great job on getting the consumers in. You know, here's one thing, Craig, you probably know. You bought this year or last year. Yeah. And one thing about it is they leave a lot of the old inventory on there. So many times it's been reposted or it's contingent or an escrow Some of these or online sold. sources, yeah. Yeah, and so, so buyers go and they spend all this time, they get excited and it's not that accurate. Similarly, is a lot of people nowadays, back in the old days, we used to call them when it came out, then we faxed them. Now we email yeah. them. Now the next trend is getting text because we all check our phone, right? Yep, and apps too, right? Apps, yeah. exactly. And so we get those. So so we've adapted to the market, and we use some you know additional technology so that people get really the newest inventory. There's no one day, two day delay. You don't have all that pending information. So the properties that are in escrow, sold, contingent, you're not receiving those to mess up. So you're receiving basically a live link of all the stuff as it hits the market, whatever way you want it, like on your text is a very popular way to get it. Isn't it like anything on the internet where, it's funny, we were talking about this recently on our radio show that the, the world of connectivity and mm -hmm. the advancement and flow of information is unbelievable. I mean, in our lifetime, it's unbelievable right. the things that we've done to advance technologically speaking. And it also obviously pertains to real estate. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a big reason I think this show even exists is that also creates a lot of misinformation. Right. So even when you're looking at things like Zillow, for example, which I right. think could be a great resource for mm -hmm. our audience to go on and try and get an idea with your property values. Right. There's also a lot of misinformation. Right, anybody can post something yeah, up. I call absolutely. it commission-based advice. There's right. all these back-end campaigns that can work. Uh, Zillow, you know, they sell your information. Right. They get a lot of this stuff wrong. So what you're speaking of is still giving you that connectivity. Yes. But being real. Right. right? Being actually accurate having versus just stale stuff that's on there. So having the information, that's one thing, but information can be bad. Right. But how can that's you make I, it yep. accurate? and how can you make it actionable? So mm. maybe knowledge, adding some knowledge to the information and then making it actionable. Like, hey, let's say you get an update on this new property that comes on the market, but you can't reach the agent, you have no relationship, you have no way of getting them, and it sells prior to you getting in. You know, the, uh our website, we always ask people to go there, right? Mm -hmm. If you have questions, reach out to us right. at craigsewing.com, and please do. And one of them that I've gotten several times is, with the advancement of technology, do you think that the real estate industry will disappear? Do you think there will be you mm -hmm. know, something that replaces a realtor? Right. It hasn't happened yet. No. You know what I mean? And it hasn't happened on the mortgage right. side either, even though I've heard Quicken Loans uh, is now talking about like doing a mortgage from your phone, which is so scary. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, 
real estate's a very relationship mm -hmm. business. You know, who you're buying with, making the biggest life decision, right. getting to know the neighborhood. You're talking about having a pool of buyers. I mean, right. this stuff is very hands-on relational. Yes. And technology can never replace it. So I always tell people that there's a difference between having a real estate license, there's 20,000 of them, and being good at it. There's a difference mm -hmm. between good and great. Mm -hmm. and good is the enemy of great. And that's why we bring guys like you on here to really get the information and kind of separate out, you know, some of the stuff that saturates the market with, with a lot of bad information. Right. But, uh, Let's talk strategy, okay. right? So it's competitive market. You have low inventory. We've heard yes. that a lot now. What are some of the best strategies when you're competing in the buyer and seller market? Yeah, so, you know, on the buyer's market, I think the first step would be trying to get some off-market properties. Like we talked about our buyers in waiting. We talked about the benefit to home sellers is that we may be able to match your property to a buyer that we already have qualified in our buyers in waiting database. The flip side to that is if you're a buyer, we have the other thing as well. So we have sellers, they've contacted us, we spend a lot of money marketing, we do it online, we do it offline. People contact us, they're looking to sell, they sign a listing with us, but it may not have hit the market. Mm -hmm. Or we have corporate relationships, say relocations with people. Remax sold about 900,000 homes last year in the US. So. We get a Seems lot like of... like a big number. Yeah, yeah, it's the number one. So we get a lot of relocating wow. people back and forth. And so many times we have them within our inventory, but they haven't hit the live market. So that's a good way to beat other buyers to hot new listings is to work with us and become part of our buyers in waiting. One of the things that you have on your website that you give out is the annual market report. Yeah, now absolutely. all housing markets are local, not even just here in America's finest city. You have right. all these unique micro markets yes. of San Diego. Tell us about the annual market report. Yeah, so what this is is you know we have our analysts go through and look at all the data in the multiple listing service, Sandicor, all and we have them break it up so you and me can digest it and our customers okay. can. So we do six different Regions. So we have um, North County Coastal, North County Inland, Central San Diego, East County, South County, and San Diego County in general. All very different markets. Different yeah. markets. And then we split it up per zip code within the region. So, you know, it ranges between 17 pages to maybe 24 pages. And Craig, the great thing about this is real estate market trends are generally seven to 10 years up, seven to 10 years down. So the challenge is, if you get comps from Zillow or something like that, you don't know necessarily where you are on that market trend. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of ours is they're from seven to 12 years, mm -hmm. depending on the data. So it'll show you trend lines in terms of average price, median price, and also the number of sales to see you know, how active your market is. Where can we get yeah, this to our audience? Absolutely. So, you know, here's a copy of it. Well, they can't come to the studio, George. No, no, they, they can hit us online. Okay. GeorgeLorimer.com. So they go to your website. Yeah. And it's, it's downloadable. They can look up their specific absolutely. zip code, get to know their area. Okay. Right away. Easy enough. So I encourage you to go free. online, connect with George. You're going to get a free annual market report, but yeah. also specific to the niche market you're interested in. So let's say you're in a in South Bay or East County, you yep. can look in those markets. Or let's say you're looking to buy in a marketplace, you can navigate that way as well. And then, of course, we are in America's finest city, the downtown marketplace. Yes. So one of the first times we went out in the field with you, we were, mm -hmm. we were talking a lot about downtown. You've mm -hmm. been very active down there. Right. What an amazing city. We are we've it already is. developed, but yeah. we continue to develop. I That's feel like beautiful. we've learned all the lessons from other big cities right. out there because of the way they've grown and we're kind of this last emerging city. What are some new things happening downtown? I know you got a listing down there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's a beautiful area where you know, a couple of the things going on is we're seeing a little bit of development on the very high end though. Right. You know, and Pacific so Gate. Yeah, exactly. And Lo lowest price point, <laughs> $1.4 million. It's a lot Good. of money. And Golly, the man. The, the lowest price point? I mean, that's insane. Right. So the HOAs are similar. So I think that's going to raise the level of all the prices there. And, so you, you think know, that actually can be a good thing I think for those so. people downtown? Okay. And, and, you know, honestly, there's a lot of people that can afford it and that want those extra amenities. Yep. They want the harbor front location. They want the great views. So... I think they're building it because there is a demand for it. You got any good listings down there? Yeah, so I, I have a real good one. Um, moderate price for downtown. It's a condominium, and it's 405000 to 430000 two-bedroom. Pacific Terrace is the building, and the HOAs are under 400 a month. George, that's an amazing thing. 
We, we, <laughs> we hear so much about the new high rises mm -hmm. and the luxury, and we were just speaking of Pacific Gate, which is a 1.4 right. million entry point. Starting. Uh, 1.4 million dollars starting point. I mean, it gets up to multi-million. It's insane what they're doing there. But that shouldn't scare you away because if you are a first-time home buyer, maybe you're an investor, you want to buy a second home. Right. A four hundred thousand dollar price range. It right. still exists in, in our amazing city of San Diego. It's a beautiful building. It's it's actually we have a yep. virtual tour of it that we'll put on here, and it's it's stunning. You know, and the thing about it, it even being from the Midwest, I'm sure my my mom watches this show online uh, and thinks 400, 500,000, and that, that is a big price figure mm -hmm. if you're coming from other parts of the world. But uh, that price point in San Diego, a very big takeaway here is that mortgage payment, if you financed it with 3%, 5% down, we'll let the mortgage guys answer that stuff for you, but you're going to have a payment less than what you're paying in rent. I mean, or very, very close. And why? Because interest rates are very low. So low rates mean low payment. Rent prices are going up, especially downtown. Yes. So you, it really is affordable. I keep hearing people say all this unaffordable stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it, certain price points are unaffordable. Yes. And certain people shouldn't buy real estate. But if you are, if you have a good job, if you have decent credit, and you can put a little bit of money down, mm -hmm. there are plenty of areas in San Diego that make sense. It depends on lifestyle. Downtown is obviously a great one, and this sounds like you know, a very attractive property. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, it's what you said is true, Craig. It's you know the price point. It is expensive. San Diego is expensive. I grew up here, and it's never not been expensive. And so, if yeah. you're going to be living here longer term, rents keep going up. It is something to investigate buying. Well, I'm parting here, George. 2016, we're off to a pretty hot start. Mm -hmm. How do you think we're going to do the rest of the year in real estate? I think it's going to be, in terms of the prices, I think there will be mild appreciation. And I think the number of units, um, detached last year was around 25,000 sold resale units and about 10,000 sold condo units. And I think we'll be above that this year. Mm. Well, like you said, I bought a house last year. I hope, I hope it does okay. <laughs> yep. And for our audience, because we, we encourage it. It's the American dream. Uh, George Lorimer. Good having you on the show. One of the best in the business. Thank you for coming here today. We learned a lot. Thank you, Craig. If you want to get that annual market report George was referring to, go to his website, georgelorimer.com. One of the good guys in the business, but don't let that confuse you. He's also one of the elite realtors, top producers, and he's a great friend of the show.